Okay, so welcome back to this class on uh, hardware security. So we shall be continuing our discussions on threshold implementation. So as we have seen in the last class, the idea of threshold implementations and where it is required to improve upon a basic masking scheme, which was secure, which is insecure against glitches. So in today's class, we shall be defining about on the properties of TI and also see some potential constructions and some case studies based on that. So as we have defined in the last class, right? This is essentially the basic idea of threshold implementations, where we are basically the idea is that if there is input x and it has been broken up into shares, then the the threshold circuit, right, should be essentially give me the corresponding output share so that if I combine them, I should get a legitimate output which is corresponding to the actual data input x. So therefore, right, as I said that there are certain important criteria which uh, the threshold implementation should satisfy. Okay. And one of the most fundamental uh, properties is what is called as uniformity of masking. Okay. So let us define on and see what it, is, it stands for. So the idea is that for all values with probability of x equal to small x which is greater than or equal to 0 that means for all legitimate values of the input x. Suppose I def define SHX to be the uh, you know like the set which essentially represents the valid shared vectors and the valid shared vectors will represent by the vector x okay, by this symbol for x. So, so that means right the shared x will essentially com, uh, co consist of those uh, those shares okay remember that uh, we had taken the input x so we, so therefore our representation was that we have taken x right we had taken x sorry we had taken x and broken up that or written up that as sx shares okay each x right is an n bit value so therefore this is also an n bit value so every share is also an n bit value so therefore, the total side of this is n into Sx, okay. And the, uh, what essentially it means that Shx should co co consist of those vectors. So this essentially, this combination, uh, this tuple, is denoted as this vector x, uh, or example, or written as in this way in my slides. That means that if I take or if I exhort these components, then I get back the original data, which is x, okay. So now we will basically try to see the conditional probability or probability of x equal to x. That means the vector so this is again the random variable which is essentially denoting this particular value say you know like x or vector x so the probability that the the shared values right for the mask or the shared vector essentially takes space uh, takes a specific vectorial value okay essentially uh, shown over here given the input is x okay given the input is x i'm trying to find out the probability that the the sharing is a specific value okay that means like for example uh, suppose you know like that x is equal to 0, I am trying to find out the probability that my sharing okay, or my sharing right is essentially suppose 0, 0, 0 given that the input is x equal to 0. Okay. Note that right if the x is equal to 0, it may also happen that the sharing right is equal to x equal to say 0, 1, 1. This is also a valid sharing of x equal to 0 because if I take an exot 0, 1 and 0, 1, I get 0. Okay. So therefore, right, these are all my individual probabilities that I would like to calculate and what it turns out is that so therefore, I can you know like so therefore, this conditional probability stands or denotes a probability that x is some vectorial x when the in unshared input is x taken over all the auxiliary inputs of the masking. Okay. So now the definition of uniform masking or a masking x is said to be uniform if and only if there exists a constant p such that for all x that means for all these values of x that means for all values of x we have if this is a valid sharing okay then this probability is a constant okay or if this is not a valid sharing then this is condition probability is zero as you can see right that if i ask you right what is the probability that x equal to 0 1 0 given that input x is 0 now this is not a valid sharing right so therefore it is trivial to know that this probability should be zero right because this is not a valid sharing but what is important also also to note that for all valid sharings this probability is a constant which is p okay and that therefore right it is important to understand why is this definition okay so the implication of this definition is actually following from secret sharing schemes okay or uh, essentially but what it tries to say is that the uniformity of masking would imply the independence of the combination of any sx minus 1 shares okay that means right uh, it will indicate that the value x is independent of any sx minus 1 shares okay that means right if you even if i give you sx minus 1 shares 
you will not get any information about the value of x if this particular property is maintained. Okay. So, therefore, right, this is an important result, it is a very important result and therefore, right, it is important to know or understand why this works. Okay. So, in order to know that, we have to basically get into the proof of this result. Okay. So, now we will basically use a particular notation where for example, this vectorial x i is basically representing a random variable or denoting a random variable which is denoting the ith share for example. Okay. And if I write x hat i bar then that means right I am basically considering the fact that uh, this particular or basically the vector without the ith share. Okay. So, therefore, what we are trying to prove is that if the masking is uniform that means if the previous definition is maintained okay, then this implies that actual data which is x is independent of this part which is essentially x i hat which means that the which basically represents a vector without the ith share that means you know like s x minus 1 shares. Okay. So, for that right let us see the this conditional probability which is essentially used or defined in my uh, definition of uniform masking. So, this conditional probability says that probability of x equal to x hat which is the vectorial x given that the actual unmasked data is a small x. Okay. So, now we can basically pretty much write this share into two parts. One part is denoting by x, x, x vectorial i this is the ith share and the part without the ith share okay, because the share will have two parts conditioned on x equal to small x. Okay. So, this you can actually apply the just de the definition here and you can write this as in the denominator it will be have probability of x equal to small x. In the numerator it is a joint probability of x i of these two parts will remain along with x equal to small x. Okay. So, that is essentially written over here as comma x equal to small x. Okay. So, this is nothing but just applying the fact that probability of uh, probability of a given b is equal to in the numerator denominator I have got probability of b in the numerator I have got probability of a comma b. So, if we just apply this definition here and a is essentially given by these two parts and b is essentially just this part then you can write this uh, okay, so trivially. So, now you can observe that uh, with this particular uh, now you can basically bring in so now we bring in two in two parts okay. So, one is essentially probability of x equal to small x x i hat equal to x i hat in the numerator and the denominator. So, they basically cancel up okay. and observe that this part is nothing but you know like the, uh, as shown over here as the conditional probability of x i hat equal to x i hat okay, given x equal to small x. Okay. So, this is essentially this part and this part okay, is essentially uh, you know like the probability of x i equal to x i. So, I basically just bring in this part and in the new denominator I basically condition in on this part that is x equal to small x x i hat equal to x i hat. Now, what is this part? So, you can observe that if x is a valid sharing that means you know like if this vector x is a valid sharing of x then this condition probability is 1 because if I give you the one of the inputs and if I give you the vector other than the ith share then this particular thing is only one result right you basically know what is that value because you can suppose you consider the xor for example then this part is nothing but the xor of this part and these parts okay and therefore right this probability is equal to 1 in that case okay so this will work out to 1 okay on the other hand right if you find that this is an invalid share then that would imply that this is zero okay so therefore right uh, that that is quite trivial so therefore right that implies that uh, what it implies is that since this is equal to p by my definition this condition probability is p for uh, for so let us just consider the valid shares in that case for a valid share therefore this probability or this condition probability is p and if this probability is p then that implies that this is equal to p okay so therefore it implies that probability of x i hat equal to x i hat okay i mean the probability that your uh, the part without the ith share the vector is x i hat given that x equal to small x is equal to p for all x. Okay. And that would imply that if I want to calculate this probability that what is the probability that if I leave out the i h here right the vector is say x i hat. So, that I can easily apply the law of uh, total probability and I can calculate this right. I can condition this on probability of x equal to small x and multiply this with the corresponding conditional probability right. 
So, and, and this I can do over pretty much sigma over x. Okay. So, now note that this part or this part is always p, is a constant p. So, therefore, I can write this sigma of probability of x equal to small x right, over all x and this part will work out to 1. Okay. So, I will get p here. Okay. And what is this part? So, this you can easily see is basically right leaving out one share. Okay. So, basically it is nothing but 1 divided by 2 to the power of n into s x minus 1 because this vector has got dimension of n times s x minus 1 because one of the shares has been left out. Okay. So, this is the vector of the shares except that one of them has been removed. Okay. So, therefore, this the, the total vector was of dimension n x s x if I remove one share then one goes. So, therefore, it is of a dimension n s x minus 1. Okay. And out of all these possible values, it can take only one possible value. Okay. And therefore, right, this is equal to 2 to the power of n 1 minus s x. Okay. And this essentially proves that you know like uh, the fact that and actually you know like you have already proved your result because if you observe this particular fact, then that means right this probability and this probability are same. Okay. And that means right this result is proved that x and x i hat they are independent. Okay? And that this proves right that even if I give you all the shares but I do not give you one of the shares basically right then that means right you are independent it does not leak any information about the actual data okay? in, a, in a very mathematical manner. Okay? So, so, therefore right I mean uh, so now what we will do is we will basically uh, try to use this definition and uh, you know like define another important definition which is called as non-completeness. So, this was what is called as uniformity. The other result is what is called as non-completeness. So, again let us take the mass circuit as we have seen in previously. So, note that here F2 for example depends on all the two shares. Okay. For example, here you can see that F2 depends upon you know like all the two shares and therefore right I mean you can observe that if there is an attacker which probes the corresponding wire that means probes corresponding F2 can observe all the information required. Okay. So, for example, here you can see that it has got x1 and x2, it is also processing on y1 and y2. So, it is processing on both on, on, on all the shares. Okay. So, therefore, if there is an attacker who is probing the corresponding wires of for f2, then basically it, it, can, it can pretty much observe all the information which is required. And therefore, right, this essentially in the proving model, you can show that this is not secured in the presence of glitches because as I say that the, you know like the probing uh, captures the fact of glitches, okay, captures the uh, vulnerability due to glitches. And here you can observe that if there is an attacker who probes right this particular circuit or this particular part of the circuit is able to observe all the required shares and therefore right can pretty much obtain the information about the uncorrelated data because it knows all the shares. If I know x1, x2, then I know the value of x. If I know y1, y2, then I know the value of y. Okay. A TI on the other hand ensures that if the attacker probes D wires, it can only observe or provide information for at most S i n minus 1 shares and as we have already shown seen that this is independent of the sensitive data. Okay. So, therefore, this brings us to the definition of what is called as dth order non-completeness which means that any combination of up to d component functions f i of this uh, vectorial function f must be independent of at least one input share. Okay. So, it must be independent of at least one input share. Based upon that, I will give my guarantees of what order of security I can protect against. Okay. So, this we can easily see right is not secured in that model because if I probe F2 then all the shares get exposed. So, this is not this is not satisfying the you know even a first order non-completeness requirement. Okay. So, therefore, right what we need is we need to kind of do something better and the security guarantee is that if the input mask x of the standard function f is a uniform masking and f is a dth order ti. Okay then the dth order analysis on the power consumption of a circuit implementing f does not reveal the unmasked input value x even if the inputs are delayed or if there are glitches which occurred in the in the circuit okay that's the security guarantee that di would provide so and again you know like it is very easy if i apply it for affine functions because a standard way of doing that is shown here suppose i have got an affine function f which I am applying on x to get a. So, you can implement this with s shares where s is greater than equal to d plus 1 to thwart a dth order attack. Okay. 
So what you will do is as follows, you will basically you know like uh, write one part of the share which is or one part of the circuit is as shown here and denoted as F1. Okay. So note that since I have got S shares, I will have got F, I basically you know like implement F as a function of you know like F1, F2 and so on till Fs. So, you are basically you know like splitting the function f into shared functions. Okay. So, you can see that the first function is shown here as just by just as f1 x1 is equal to a1 okay. and that is same as f on x1. Okay. Whereas, for the other parts right I essentially write as fi xi that means from 2 to s I write as fi of xi and that is equal to ai where fi is nothing but f but without the constant terms. Okay. So, note that in an affine function right you typically has got a into x plus b form that is your form of an affine mapping. Okay. So, consider an example suppose you have got 1 x dot x which you would like to implement using a ti mechanism. So, what we do is for the first component part we basically just write f 1 x 1 and apply it on the same function f x. Okay. So, you write that as 1 x dot x 1 whereas, for the other parts you basically implement using this. Okay. So, as we have seen right let us, let us consider an example to understand this. Suppose you have got the function f x which is equal to 1 x dot x this is an example of an affine mapping. So, what I do is basically I have got s shares the first share I basically write is, a, is your f 1. Okay. So, this f 1 you can actually write it as shown here as 1 x dot x 1. Okay. So, you see that here we are using the same function as f okay just plugging in you know like x1 as an input so if i plug in x1 as input i get 1 x dot with x1 that is your f1 for the other parts of the share that is from 2 to s basically you basically again apply the same function but without the constant term okay so you have got f1 x1 as you know like so in this part you have got fi xi that means f2 x2 for example is nothing but x2 and like this right you have got f s x s is equal to x s. Okay. So, you see that in one, one, one of the shares you have got 1 x or x1 and you have got x2 to x s. So, if you combine these results you get 1 x with all the x of x1 to x s which is nothing but your x. Okay. So, therefore, if you combine the results you get 1 x with the x of x1 to x s and this is nothing but x which is essentially what you want to compute. Okay. So, therefore, again you know like it is for affine mappings it is quite trivial and it can be done in this manner. Okay. But on the other hand right I mean this becomes more complicated when you are applying it on non uh, you know like on other kind of functions. Okay. So, now we will see you know like before I go into that and um, another important criteria which essentially would help me to apply this on nonlinear functions. Okay. So, for example, right, let us consider a nonlinear function as shown here as x y. Okay. So, here is a first order threshold implementation of this scheme. You can note that I have basically split up x into three parts x 1, x 2 and x 3. So, one thumb rule that you can apply is that if this degree is 2 then uh, potentially I require 3 you know like 3 uh, shares okay. and uh, I, I require you know like to implement using uh, three shares and it can. So, here what we do is that if I have got x y I implement them in the shares like a 1, a 2 and a 3. Okay. So, so, the way a, a 1 is working is that a 1 essentially operates on as you can see on x 2, x 3, but it does not apply, apply on x 1s or y 1s okay. and that is why that this satisfies the criteria of its non or incompleteness. Okay. So, therefore, as we have seen right in the previous case when we want the non completeness definition then at least one of the shares should be left out and that is exactly what we see here. Here for example, x 1 or the first share has been left out. Similarly, here the second share has been left out here the third share has been left out and these are the corresponding functions. Okay. If you combine this I leave it to as an exercise to see that this should be leading to x y okay. and that is that is the correctness of your definition. Okay. But now there is a very important observation if you, you, you can see that if you do, do an what is called as a uniformity analysis of this circuit. Okay. So, if you do an uniformity analysis of this circuit then let us try to you know like do this exercise. Suppose I fix x equal to 0 and y equal to 0. Okay. If x is equal to 0 that means that the shares x 1, x 2 and x 3 remember there are 3 shares should get x or into 0 
Likewise, y1, y2, y3 should get XOR into 0. So, therefore, if I get a table where or make a table right with all these shares like you know like say 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1 and 1, 1, 0. So, note that these are the shares which essentially will get XOR into 0. Okay. Likewise, you know like I, I, I basically kind of tabulate it in this fashion that these are the shares for x and these are the shares for y. Okay. And I try to find out what are the output circuits. That means, you know, like the moment I have got say 0, 0, 0 and 0, 0, 0, I feed it into these equations and find out the value of a1, a2, and a3, and I annotate it in this table. Okay. So, you can observe that if you want to do that, then or if you do that, basically, you can observe that I get many cases where I have got 0, 0, 0. I have got, you know, like I think around 7 cases where you have got 0, 0, 0. Likewise, if you observe the case number of cases where you get 1110, 110, so you get 1100 here, you get 1110 here, you get 110 here. So, there are probably 3 cases where you get that. Okay. Likewise, if you observe 101, you get 101 here, 101 here and a 101 here, which is again 3 cases. If you observe 011, so these are you know like, uh, uh, you know like 011 and 011 here and a 011 here. So, again you have got 3 cases where you observe that. Okay. So, now imagine that this particular circuit, uh, so therefore, you know like from the security guarantee that we have seen, if the input is uniformly masked and it satisfies the definition of non-completeness, then this circuit alone should not leak any information about the data. Okay. So, you can, you know like, so likewise, you know like the way we have done the analysis for x equal to 0 and y equal to 0, you can continue and do it for other values of x and y. So, remember that x and y will have 4 possible values because there are 2 bits here. So, if you do that, then uh, you will get a larger table where you know like you take these statistics and you just dump into uh, that table. So, what you will get is something like this right here. Uh, so, you see that there are 4 cases and I observe the you know like the distribution of the output values a1, a2, a3. So, these are the distributions of the output shares. Okay. For example, I worked out this case like for 0, 0 where this has got 7 and the other 3 cases had got 3 values, whereas these are the invalid shares which will never, never appear. Okay. Now, similarly you can work it for 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. Okay. Interestingly, right, as you can see that the input masking x, y is uniform and the circuit is a first order T i satisfying all the properties that we have seen so far. The circuit itself does not leak with respect to a first order DPA adversary. Okay. For example, right, you, if you want to observe that, you can see that the average Hamming weights, okay, for example, in the output. For example, in all these three cases, you can observe that the distribution is exactly uniform. Okay, so exactly, it the, the average Hamming weight would be the same in these cases. In this case, which slightly looks different, you will also work out that you can see that, that this is an interesting exercise to work out. For example, the average Hamming weight here is two into three. Okay, so you see that the Hamming weight here is two. And there are 3 cases where this occurs. So, the 2 into 3 is 6. Likewise, again, this is 2 into 3, which is 6, 2 into 3, which is 6. So, you have got 6 into 3, which is equal to 18. Okay. And there are totally, right, if you add up, it is 6, uh, I think 7 plus 3 is 10, plus 3 is 13, plus 3 is 16. So, the average Hamming weight is 18 by 16. Okay. On the other hand, right, so if I, uh, if I do it for this particular case, you will see that it is 5 into 1 plus 5 into 1 plus 5 into 1 which is 15 plus 1 into 3 which is 18. Okay. So, you still get this 18 by 16 and you see that the average Hamming weight does not depend upon your uncorrelated data. Okay. And therefore, right, this is fine, this is kind of secured against first order DPA even in the presence of glitches. Okay. However, if you do this exercise, uh, you know like, uh, however, if you do this exercise and uh, uh, for you know like for, for, for you know like for the fact that what what if you know if this circuit is fed as an input to a second circuit then how will the second circuit behave because remember now the output distribution is essentially according to this pattern of a1 a2 a3 okay so this is the mask which is fed to the following circuit okay so if you do that right then you will see that uh, uh, you will basically get uh, you know like you can do an analysis like this so this is what we do so you take z and now you combine it with, so this z is again a uniform uh, net okay? and you basically combine the output of this previous circuit again by applying an AND functionality. Okay? But this AND is again implemented in the same way as we have seen previously. Okay? 
So now assume that Z is uniform and A is the output of the previous masks. Okay. Suppose I fix X and Y as 1 and 1. Okay. So that is the last row if you remember in the previous table. So here are the possible distributions of the output mask like 0, 0, 001, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 1, 1. You can see here 5, 5, 5 and 1 are the possible cases. And Z right, essentially can take all these four values. Okay. So if you now do a combination, you will see that the number of possible combinations are 5 into 4 because all these things can get combined with this. So there are like 5 into 4. Okay. For example, uh, this 5 can combine with this 4. So it is 5 into 4 which is 20. Likewise, 20 into 3, okay, 20 into 3 plus this can combine with 4. So, you will have 64 such possible combinations. Okay. And out of them, right, here is the possible, uh, you can observe that, the, so I am basically trying to see how many cases I get output 0, 0. So, it turns out that there are 31 cases where the output mask will be 0, 0, 0. Okay. And so, you basically, you, you can work that out by just trying these combinations. Okay. So likewise, if the output is 0, 1, 1, it is 11 cases, here it is 11 cases and here it is 11 cases. Okay. So this you can get by combining these masks with these masks and again fitting into the equations of the uh, 3, A1, A2 and A3. Okay. So therefore, this essentially is for the fact when x and y are 1 and 1. Okay. So you can actually take this and you can now again you know like plug it into the bigger table. And if you do that, right, then you basically get a distribution as this. So this is the specific case where I showed, uh, where I showed you, you know, like that. This is one, one, and z is zero. So this is the one which I worked out here, one, one, and zero. And you know, the, the annotation is 31, 11, 11, right? So this is again 31, 11, 11, 11. So likewise, you can work out the remaining cases. Okay. So now, if you observe the Hamming weights, okay, the ha average Hamming weight, for example, here is 11 into two into three because this is zero. So this turns out to be 30, uh, this turns out to be 33 by 32. Okay? Whereas if you try to do the exercise for the first six cases, this will work out to something like 27 by 32. Okay? So this shows that there is a deviation of the means with inputs which will lead to a first order DP attack even now. Okay? So note that if, even if this function g was linear, then this problem would not have appeared because then that input distribution would have just got transformed into the output okay? and therefore there, there would not have been any problem. But that implies that now the question is right, if you have got an uniform masking and if you fit it in the next layer, then how do you apply it? Okay? And that essentially is something that we need to consider, we need to tackle. Okay? And uh, what we will do is basically, you know, like if we apply this, then uh, we will see that how we can do that. And uh, for that, we have, we have got a final criteria which is called as uniform sharing of a function. Okay? This says that if you want to make sure that the input of the sharing G which follows F is also a uniform masking. So basically this leads us or this observation leads us to the fact that we need to properly cascade the nonlinear functions. Okay? So the idea is that we need to make sure that the input of, the, of a sharing G which follows F is also a uniform masking. Okay? So therefore right, uh, the criteria for satisfying this uh, is, 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 is is often called commonly as the uniform sharing of a function. The idea is that the dth order sharing f is uniform if and only if this criteria is satisfied. Therefore, we are not only bothered about the input share, but we also consider the output shares in this property okay, or in this criteria. So for that, consider for all x which belongs to f to n and for all a which belongs to f to m, these are the possible input values and the output values, where x results in a, that means fx is equal to a. Okay. Then for all the shares A, which belongs, to, these are the output shares A and S out satisfying greater than equal to D plus 1, then the cardinality of this uh, particular set, which basically tells me that if I take the input shares X and if I obtain the output shares A, okay, the number of input shares for which this is valid essentially is given by this ratio 2 to the power of N S in minus 1 divided by 2 to the power of N S out minus 1. Okay. So the rationale behind this particular criteria will soon be clear if we were just get into the proof of why this leads to a uniform sharing. Okay, I mean why it leads to a uniform distribution of the output value. Okay, so remember that the problem was that in the previous case we had a uniform distribution of the input, which is essentially the uh, you know like the, the 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 input x. But the problem was that we didn't get that uniform distribution in the output a. Okay, so now we will see that why why it works. Okay, and for that let us see the corresponding proof. So the idea is that if your masking x is uniform and the circuit f is uniform, then the masking a of a equal to fx which is defined by a equal to fx is also uniform. 
Okay. So now what we will want to do is that so likewise we had you know like we have seen that the criteria for a uniform mass given by this condition probability as shown over here. Okay. So in the previous case right if you remember right that the criteria was given by this notation right it was probability of x hat uh, equal to say this right this is your output uh, this is a shared uh, this thing a shared shared value and x equal to small x. So, we basically calculated this probability and we saw that if this is a valid sharing then this is a constant p that was my criteria. Okay. If I want to get the similar property for the output right then I also need to look into this and I this is my corresponding conditional probability because here my actual value is a equal to small a. I want to find out the conditional probability that there is a sharing which is occurring given the value of a equal to small a and I want to basically calculate this probability and I want to see that this is a uniform distribution. Okay. So, this you can easily you know like obtain by you know like applying over all the possible input x's. So, you know these are the all the possible input shares of x okay. and you are basically pretty much calculating this by uh, taking all the possible you know like uh, so basically if I want to calculate this particular condition probability then I will be calculating it over all values of x equal to small x and their corresponding shares. Okay. So, x is equal to this and x hat is equal to small x hat. Okay. So, this is my or math cal x. So, these are so I am basically uh, calculating over the joint probability of these two these two these two these two terms. Okay. And I calculate so if, if this be so that means if my uh, input x is equal to small x and my input sharing is denoted as math cal x then I can feed it into my equation okay, or my shared uh, or my TI implementation and I get an output share. Okay. So, this output share essentially right essentially is giving uh, or denoted as a hat and that is equal to right if I take f hat or you know like the, uh, the TI implementation of f and apply uh, x hat uh, I mean apply it on x hat then essentially it turns out to be this conditional probability. Okay where the input x is essentially you know like uh, and I basically do a sigma such that over all x where f x is equal to a okay? because f x essentially has to give me a and that is why right I get that this a, this a hat is equal to vectorial a. Okay? So, therefore, right I mean if I now if you observe the inner probability in this summation the inner probability in this summation is 2 to the power of n times and this is essentially given by my criteria just just what just we have seen previous to this. It is 2 to the power of n s i n minus 1 minus m into s out minus 1 okay, multiplied by this probability by this condition probability into probability of x equal to small x because this again again you know like this particular thing has been broken up into these two terms probability of x equal to small x multiplied by this condition probability. Okay. So, now what is this? This essentially has been already given by the fact that a uniform masking was obtained for input okay? and therefore, this is nothing but 2 to the power of minus, I A minus n s i n minus 1. This is already, already what we have derived okay? in the previous, uh, previous context of uniform masking and therefore, right, if I multiply this with this, these two terms cancels and I have got only this part remaining which is 2 to the power of minus m s out minus 1. Okay? So, note that this part right if I do a sigma over all values of x then this part sums up to 1 and therefore right I get this result that this condition probability or probability of a equal to a hat given b, you know like a equal to small a is equal to now 2 to the power of minus m s out minus 1 and is a constant p okay? and therefore right it shows that the output masking is also now uniform. So, the input masking is uniform and as well as the output masking is uniform. Since the output masking is uniform, now if I apply this as an input to a to a following circuit, that also remains nicely intact. Okay, so there is also no leakage, as we have just now seen because of that. Okay, so therefore, uh, that essentially pretty much kind of helps us to ensure that uh, we can cascade the nonlinear functions. Okay, in fact, right, what we will do is uh, you know like just being more careful. Uh, so, we will see. Uh, so, therefore, right, what we do is uh, so here is an example of uh, non completeness. So, again, you know, like if we take the example of x, x or y, z. So, you have got three, fun three shares for x like x1, x2, x3, and again, y is shared into y1, y2, y3, z1, z2, z3. Here, you can see that it has been realized by three corresponding functions. So, this is the first order non complete because you can see that every sh input right does not depend upon one shares. Okay, and therefore, right, uh, it is satisfying the requirement of a first order non-completeness 
and uh, also right we observe, observe that we can make a general con uh, comment here that is to protect a function with degree d at least d plus 1 shares are required ok. So, here the degree is 2 and therefore we require at least 3 shares to re realize this. But further right, if, 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 if we want to compose nonlinear functions, a, a technique that we follow is that we will separate nonlinear functions with registers to prevent propagation of glitches. Okay. So, therefore, if you have got different layers, then these layers are separated out by a register layer so that the glitches here does not get transformed into the next layer. Okay. Just to ensure that there is no accidental leakage which happens because of uh, you know combining cones okay, or, 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 or or you know like circuit paths which are getting combined ok. So, so finally right uh, I mean uh, so here is an example or just to illustrate that uh, for example if you take the case of AND gates right why you essentially cannot realize it. So, the AND gate essentially you know like you cannot realize uh, using two shares ok as you can do for an XOR. For example, if you have got a two input XOR, so here it is shown as A or B. If I want to realize A in two shares, then I just write A1 ZOR A2. So, here is like there is three shares like A1 ZOR A2 ZOR A3 is equal to A, B1 ZOR B2 ZOR B3 is equal to B. And likewise, right, you, you can see that uh, you know like you can also the, the idea here is that for, for an XOR, right, you can easily do that because you can you can realize it using three shares of course, you can also realize it using two shares. Okay. So, for example, right what I will do is I will just write here as a I mean what I do here is I basically take a as a 1 zor a 2 zor a 3 b as b 1 zor b 2 zor b 3. If I write, want to write c 1 c 2 c 3 as your corresponding output shares then what I just do is that I write c 1 as a 1 zor b 1 ok. Note that I have left out the second uh, one of the shares here. Likewise, I can replace, I can realize C2 as A2 Zord B2, I can realize C3 as A3 Zord B3, okay. This is non complete and also uniform and also correct, okay. In fact, all the three properties can be achieved by using two shares, okay. Although we have worked with three shares, but you can also work it with two shares, okay. To summarize, TI design for non linear functions are easy, but at the same time, right, it would be interesting to see that whether you can do the similar thing for an AND gate, okay. But it turns out that it is not possible for AND gates because if you want to realize an AND gate with two shares, then that means that you have broken up A into A1 ZOR A2, B as into B1 ZOR B2 and therefore the corresponding output shares must contain the following four terms A1 B1, A1 B2, A2 B1 and A2 B2 and you can do as an, take it as an exercise to see that these four terms right must be combined into two shares, but you cannot do in any way without violating the non-completeness definition ok. So, therefore, if you put in right for example, A1, B1 and A2, B1 you can observe that this depends on both A1 and A2 therefore, it does not satisfy the non-completeness definition. In fact, any possible uh, combination would lead, in, would lead into this conclusion ok and therefore, you need to increase the number of shares. So, you see here that if you want to make a TI of two input AND gate here is a solution worked out with four shares ok x1, x2, x3 and x4. I leave it to you as an exercise to kind of judge that this satisfies the definition of uniformity, non-completeness and at the same time you know like that is correct at the end of the day. You can actually realize or a circuit with less number of shares, but at, bit at the cost of extra randomness ok. For example, I can reduce the shares from 4 to 3, but I need an extra and I, I need actually extra random bits as indicated as R1, R2 and so on ok. It is a challenge on how to realize a circuit with less shares and also with less randomness ok. For example, here you can you see a circuit where we can still realize an AND gate with three shares, but now with a lesser amount of randomness requirement. For example, here there is only one random bit which is required and therefore, right this is a better implementation in, in, in with respect to cost because any random bit right essentially is not easy to develop or easy to generate and therefore, it comes with an accompanying cost. Okay. So, here is an, another example that you can observe for a lightweight TI based S box. So, in order to realize that consider that we have got and this these are some popular tricks which people have developed for implementing lightweight uh, TI implementations. For example, if you consider this function f here you can see it is x z w z y w z x y z y z z. Okay. So, if you just straightforward apply threshold implementation on this, you will see that you will require four shares because this has got three degrees and therefore, you will require four shares. But you can do it cleverly by 
uh, for example, in this case, what you can do is you can observe or kind of define some intermediate variables, say b1, b2, and b3 as follows. So, b1 is nothing but x or of x or y or xw or yw, okay. b2 is z or xy or xz, b3 is x or w or xz or zw. You can see that if I combine b1, b2, and b3, right, then uh, so th therefore you will observe that uh, you know, like you can basically. Uh, you know like these are the three parts in which the circuit has been broken up for example okay these are the three intermediate or you know like i would say like intermediate variables which has been defined the purpose is that now you can write f in terms of b1 b2 and b3 so you can write f as b1 applied on the inputs b1 b2 and b3 because you see that now f you can write in terms of b1 and b2 and b3 in this way because f is b1 zord b2 zord b1 b3 zord b2 b3 again i leave it to as an exercise to verify that this is correct you can observe that this form is exactly equal to this form okay and this is nothing but applying b1 on the inputs b1 b2 and b3 so you can write this as b1 applied on b1 b2 and b3 okay so now you can realize you know like b1 by applying you can apply ti on b1 but the advantage now is that since it has got a degree of 2 you can realize it with three shares okay so therefore right i will break b1 into b11 b12 and b13 likewise b2 into b21 b22 and b23 b3 into b31 b32 and b33 okay and you can basically realize b11 b12 b13 using these equations you can observe again this satisfies the required properties for ti okay and uh, likewise i can write b21 b22 b23 and b31 b32 and b33 and since i know how to realize b1 now i can realize f also using these three shares where b1 right will be broken up into these three shares b11 b12 b13 and b2 will be broken up into b21 b22 and b23 and likewise for b3 okay so therefore you can realize the entire ti in a controlled manner by not allowing you know like the circuit to blow up and the cost essentially because you have to ensure that at the, at, at the end of the day right that the cost for implementing the countermeasure should be suitably controlled okay so you can kind of compare this with you know like an effort to straightforward apply a ti on this function where you will be requiring at least 3 plus 1 that is 4 shares okay and therefore this and also like this nonlinear circuit will significantly com, uh, you know like contribute to the blow up of the area requirement so if you realize this in this suitable way then at the end of the day if you remember right that we had discussed about tvla evaluation so if you take this s box and do a tvla and then you can see that nicely that the leakage is within your threshold of 4.5 or plus minus 4.5 and therefore this indeed gives you a security and you, you can see that there is potentially no leakage with respect to uh, this kind of power attacks okay so this is a, this is an evaluation for a first order dpa requirement okay so to conclude right masking is a popular countermeasure however these are susceptible for first order uh, attacks due to glitches ti or threshold implementation gives a method based on secret sharing to alleviate this we have seen some properties and constructions on ti and here are some popular uh, or here are some references in particular i would take you notice to the first reference uh, which is essentially a phd thesis but nicely gives an uh, you know like anecdote about how to implement ti and also see various implications and further implications on threshold implementations if you are interested to continue on this okay so with this i would like to say thank you for your attention